Hello, everyone. Welcome. I will give everyone a couple minutes to get situated in here, but thank you for joining our, the continuation of our webinar series. Today, we are here with Dr. Mitchell Goldman, and we are going to be discussing leg veins, sclerotherapy, and all the different treatments for them. So I see a lot of you joining right now. I'll just give you another couple minutes to get situated. While I do so, I want to remind you guys of some functions in the Zoom. So on the bottom, there is two functions you should see. One is chat and one is Q&A. So the Q&A is definitely where you should start popping in your questions that you might have. You can start now. You can start as Dr. Goldman is speaking or at the end during the Q&A session, and he will try to get to as many and hopefully all of them. Um, uh, there is also a chat feature if you need to send just a private chat to me. But if it's a question for Dr. Goldman, if you could put it in Q&A, that would be helpful. Otherwise, while I wait for a few more people to join here, um, I have a little um, quiz or poll for you guys just to ask you a little bit about your veins. So there should be a poll that just popped up on your screen. If you guys could just answer these two questions, it'll help give us give us a sense of where everyone is at right now with their leg veins. So I see a lot of you answering, so I know it's popped up. So when you're done, you just have to click submit questions so they come in. Let's give it a few more seconds for you guys to finish answering. All right, last chance, press submit. Okay, thank you. All right, so it appears that most of you um, actually have not had your legs feel heavy or hurt and haven't had kids ask about them, but that's okay. You probably are here to learn and maybe just because they bother you and you wanna learn more about leg veins. So, um, with this in mind, um, I'm, I'm, a few more people might still be joining, but we will get started. So again, thank you. Welcome back to our Staying Beautiful and Healthy webinar series with Cosmetic Laser Dermatology. Today we are here with Dr. Mitchell Goldman, and he is going to be discussing leg veins. The title of his lecture is Advances in Treating Telangic 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 Tatic. <laughs> Sorry, leg veins, which is his fancy way of just saying leg veins. So anyways, um, the Q&A, you are welcome to start submitting those now. Otherwise, Dr. Goldman is a world-renowned expert on a number of treatments, everything from injectables to lasers to body sculpting to veins. But veins is definitely a very special area of his expertise. It's probably what he first became world famous for. And he's actually considered one of the godfathers of sclerotherapy, helping to develop a lot of the techniques used today around the world. He's the one who's taught most of the physicians that are doing sclerotherapy today, as he has written a number of medical textbooks for students and board certified physicians. So you are in great hands, and I'm very excited to hand this over now to Dr. Mitchell Goldman. Hi, thank you guys for being here. I know it's really difficult times, but it's always good to try to do something productive. And so this is the productive stuff that we're doing. As you can see, I really have liked to write. And so ever since I was a dermatology resident, I've written a lot of articles and textbooks and one of the textbooks um, is really, the, it's in its sixth edition and it's in six different languages. And this was the very first textbook in the English language um, that I wrote actually when I was a resident at UCLA uh, 35 years ago um, to figure out about leg veins. And the reason I did it is because one of my professors at the time, a Dr. David Duffy, who is one of the most remarkable people I've known um, came into the clinic one day and he said, wow, he says, I've got this new treatment that I learned in Europe, you know, where's a, a nurse? And he basically started injecting, as we can see here. And this is from a, I think it's called Shape Magazine. It was a magazine popular in the 1980s. Maybe it's still popular now. And they actually did a, an article. And here I was as a resident at UCLA and Dr. Duffy being quoted in this article 
about now it's time to fix your spider veins for the leggy season. And it actually is about the sixth most popular cosmetic procedure. And it's something that I've been known for and I've, I've been really liking to do uh, for the last 35 years. So you can see I've been doing it for a very long time. And I take pictures of all my patients. And this shows you what the patient uh, looked like. And this was behind her knee in 1988. And I treated her. But then, you know, other things happened in her life. And even though the veins I treated never came back, she developed new veins that you can sort of see here, this big vein coming down. And she found me again many, many years later you know, 22 years later, and I was able to treat this big vein here. And you could see that when I saw her five years later, uh, the vein still goes away. And so this is called sclerotherapy treatment. And it's a treatment that is really easy to do. Now, the reason we ask these questions in the beginning is because almost half the patients that even have veins like this called spider veins may have some heaviness to their legs. And probably the number one reason why a patient comes to see me is that uh, a kid down the block or one of their uh, nieces or nephews or grandkids have pointed out and said, you know, mom or grandma, what is that thing on the back of your leg? And that's a sure-fired way to get patients to come in to see me. So when you treat leg veins, what I want to try to share with you today is there's actually a scientific, logical way to treat leg veins. It's not just sticking a needle into the vein or using a laser uh, to make the vein go away. You have to treat it like you would any kind of medical condition. And so we're gonna be using some large words today. You see that that word telangiectasia is, means basically spider veins. And then you'll see another uh, term called varicose veins. And varicose veins are more like the size of your finger. And you see these initials here, S, F, P, J, and S, P, J. That means saphenofemoral junction. So when you heard in the past when your grandmother or mother may have had her veins stripped, that's because she had large veins uh, that required stripping. And we'll go into some of that as well because we were able to develop new techniques that makes it so you don't have to go through these barbaric procedures. But interestingly, patients come in and they actually say, oh, I would like a laser for my veins. But really, the laser is the very last thing we ever do for veins because it is the most painful way to treat veins, even though it sounds really cool because it's a, a laser. But it really is quite painful. And even though in our office, we've got over 50 different lasers, um, many of which we've developed to treat leg veins, including the intense pulse light, uh, really sclerotherapy or just simple painless injections are the way to go. So one of the ways that I talk to patients about um, their veins is I use this photograph from Ansel Adams of an oak tree in Sunset uh, City, California. And here you can see there's a beautiful sunset, but this tree, some of the branches are sort of hiding the sunset. And so the, the question is, how do you get, get it so you can have a really nice sunset and a tree as well? Well, you can, of course, cut the whole tree down, and that would be the main trunk of the varicose veins. Or you could cut just a branch down here. But what's commonly done is people just take off the leaves so you can try to see the sunset better. But you know those of us that have trees, that it keeps growing back bigger and bigger uh, every year, even when you just cut them down a little bit. And so it is very important to cut it down in a certain location. And what we do with varicose veins and spider veins on your legs is we do the same type of thing. We treat the veins uh, that need to be treated. So this is the common presentation of spider veins. Many patients come in this is the lateral aspect of the thigh or the outside of the thigh. And the patients come in and they say, you know, I really hate these veins. Can you make them go away? But if you look really closely, you can see this sort of blue green vein here. And this is like the, the branch, this is like of the vein. And so what you do is you don't treat these veins because if you treat these veins, just like if you take off the leaves of the tree, they keep coming back and you have to have 
six, seven, eight treatments. But if you treat this vein, which is really, really easy to treat, all of this goes away. And so that's the big concept that I want to share with you. It's how do you treat patients properly? So not that I don't love seeing my patients dozens of times, but if you do things right, it only takes one or two treatments to make all of the veins go away. Now, a lot of the vein clinics out there want you to come back 20 times because that's all they do. But I would prefer if we treat your leg veins, then the next time you see me, you come back for something like Botox or Restylane or, or another really cool procedure to make yourself more beautiful. Um, veins only once or twice. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning. Um, this is an article from 2001 by some very good vascular surgeons. And the title of the article was Modern Vein Surgery. And this is how the vascular surgeons would treat you. So they, they'd end up cutting the heck out of your leg. And I don't think that this is a very good cosmetic uh, result that the vascular surgeons uh, would end up doing. And so I was trying to figure out what is a better way to do this. And the better way to do this is not having you in the hospital under general anesthesia, getting lots of cutting and sewing, but it's to do a procedure called phlebectomy. And this is one of my patients that basically had these really yucky looking veins. And you can see here that the ba basically the patient, you can't even tell where the veins were nor the surgery that I did because we do a surgery with fully awake patients under local anesthesia with using the teeniest of hooks just to get rid of these veins. And it's a procedure called ambulatory phlebectomy. One of the books that I wrote about this, a procedure that I learned actually when I was uh, traveling in Europe, uh, learning about leg veins. Even when you have veins that are like this, this large veins on your legs, which obviously causes not only uh, a, you know, being yucky looking, but also causing pain. By just doing that phlebectomy procedure, you can see the beautiful result that you get without causing uh, any kinds of adverse effects. Now, this is obviously a guy because here is there's hair. And the interesting thing is when you have these abnormal veins, the blood is not flowing properly. And so you can see the person had no hair. But once we're able to treat the veins and improve the circulation, then all of a sudden the hair starts growing again. This is another patient, uh, an athlete, who really was bothered again by this kind of vein. And again, by doing this procedure called phlebectomy, which is done with a local anesthetic, with you wide awake, no pain whatsoever, you can see how incredible uh, the results are. So let's go to a more severe kind of condition, and that is what's called an incompetent great saphenous vein. And those were the veins that people had a procedure called ligation and stripping, which is a procedure that you'd had to go to the hospital. It was under a general anesthesia, and it was really a, a yucky procedure. So uh, a friend of mine, Dr. Robert Weiss in Baltimore and I, came up with a different idea, and that idea is we were gonna put a laser fiber into that vein, which the surgeons would strip out. We would use a local anesthetic around the vein. And as you can see here, that laser fiber would shrink the vein closed. That's a procedure called endovenous laser treatment, a long word. And that really revolutionized vascular surgery. Now in the beginning, it was really tough for a mere dermatologist to teach vascular surgeons how to do this because of course they didn't believe anything we said. But now if you can believe it, this procedure is the procedure that is always done for varicose veins. Because we did this procedure, um, we developed the procedure, no longer do people have to have um, ligation and stripping. And this is one of our patients we did many, many years ago. It's actually one of the very first patients I did the very first patient ever done was done on April 5th, 2000. And you can see that this is one of those very first patients and you can see how nice the result uh, is with this patient. We also, uh, this is a patient I actually taught doctors in New Zealand how to do. And you can see again how incredible the results are 
in doing this very simple procedure, putting a laser fiber into the vein over here and over here to cause the vessels uh, to go away. Well, that's the surgical part of the talk. And now I wanna talk about sclerotherapy. Sclerotherapy is a, a very interesting word. Um, and it comes from the Greek sclero, which means hardening. And so what we do is we literally put a medicine into the vein, it causes it to sort of clot up and then become what's called a fibrous cord. And this is exactly what happens. These are the veins before we treated them. One day later, the veins become a little bit inflamed because what we're doing is we're not vaporizing the veins or stripping them out. What we're doing is we're irritating them and that allows the body to resorb the veins and make them go away. So it does take at least one or two months after the procedure for the veins to go away. And these are sort of the results that we get. Um, this is a typical patient. Almost all of these patients just needed one treatment to have the veins go away. And this is another patient. She required three different treatments to get all of these veins to go away. And now what I'd like to do is to show you a video. It's not a horrible video. There's not gonna be a lot of bleeding, but at least it gives you an idea of what we're doing. So what we do is we basically gently inject this medicine and you can see the medicine goes through the vein, displacing the blood. And so you see the veins literally clearing before your eyes. There's not a lot of blood because we're closing off the veins. What you're gonna see here is I'm actually gonna be injecting those blue-green veins. And you can see when you inject what are called the feeder veins, it actually makes the smaller veins, what we call spider veins, go away. So here's some other uh, photographs. You can see that injecting the solution displaces the blood. You literally see the veins literally go away right before your eyes. Um, and you don't see a lot of blood because the veins are totally gone, they're collapsing. After we, uh, you can see it, here's a few more treatments. So you can see how I'm not treating the individual spider veins. Instead, we're treating the feeding veins, causing the little spider veins to go away. And we'll just see this a few times. Now, obviously there's no sound in the picture, but believe me, I've been doing it 35 years Patients do not find this uh, a disturbing procedure. They don't think it's very painful. The size needle that we're using is like an acupuncture needle. And this is like the money shot. So you can see, you don't have to treat all the little veins. You just treat the feeding vein and all the little veins go away. And once they go away in 35 years, I've never in any patient ever seen the veins come back. And believe me, if they didn't come back, patients would find me. Um, these are the little teeny veins that we're doing. So after we do all the feeder veins, we're now getting rid of all the little teeny veins. I use a solution called glycerin here, which is basically like a sugar water. It's mixed with a little bit of anesthetic called lidocaine. And again, it's very, very um, pain-free. Now, one or two patients, actually just don't like the idea of having a needle stuck into them. And so in our office, we do offer laughing gas or nitrous oxide. Interestingly, I've only used it in 35 years, maybe, oh, less than a dozen times, uh, mostly on guys, because as ladies, you know, guys are usually the wimpy kind of people. And so uh, like one of my best friends, maybe he just likes the laughing gas, but he always gets a little laughing gas when we do this. Now, expectations are very important, and I never want to oversell something. I want to basically under-promise and over-deliver. And so this was a very uh, pretty young lady that came in to see me, and she literally came in with this on her. She had marked all of her veins on her legs, and she said, okay, I want all of these veins to go away. Now, it was really, really hard even for me to see these veins. And so this is the type of patient you have to have a, a discussion with saying, you know, 99% of all my patients would love to have veins like you do. Um, and this might not be a good patient uh, to treat. And so 
having realistic expectations is very, very important. Now in this patient, after we had a discussion about realistic expectations, this is the patient I would use a laser on, but it's not a one-shot deal or proposal. Uh, treating this patient took about three to four treatments to finally get her to be very satisfied with the way her legs looked. If you do decide to come into our office to have the procedure, this is what I'd like you to be prepared to do. First of all, it's always important to eat breakfast. It's amazing how rushed everyone is these days and no one wants to eat, but I find if you eat something, you're not gonna faint. Now, in, again, all my 35 years of doing this, I've only had, oh, two, two or three people faint, and of course, those are guys. And so, you know, when you do guys, you gotta be really careful and lie down. But basically, a woman, just eat a little bit so you don't get lightheaded. Also, don't shave your legs or use moisturizers on the day of treatment. Um, a funny story here is when my wife was having our first baby and her water broke um, three weeks before the due date, I was running around the, the house going crazy. And where was she? In the shower, shaving her legs. Why? Because she didn't want to go to the hospital uh, to see any of my friends or her obstetrician with hairy legs. But please, ladies, I've seen, I've been married a number of times over the last 35 years. You, you, you don't have to shave your legs for me. So um, the reason I don't want you to shave your legs is it might sting a little bit when I rub your legs with alcohol. Um, and then all, also, if you cut yourself on the leg, that's not really uh, good as well. Also, you can wear short shorts uh, for the treatment session, or if you don't have any, we have a, a hygienic uh, paper shorts for you to wear as well. Uh, we also like you to bring either pre-fitted graduated compression stockings, or in our office, we will fit you with compression stockings, and I'll talk about that in, in another minute. So how do we treat your legs? Well, first, we treat any of the feeding veins first, then we treat the smaller veins, um, and usually it takes one or two treatments uh, per leg to get your uh, legs to look really, really good. And if you do need any other treatments, it's usually not for around six months or so. Now, compression is interesting. You know, some doctors will treat patients' legs and say, oh, you don't have to wear compression stockings. These are the doctors that want to see you back about 20 times. Because you, if you don't wear compression stockings, you might have a good result, but you're gonna have to come back many, many times. Again, not that I don't love seeing my patients, but I'd rather just see you once or twice for your leg veins. And so the reason I'm such a stickler about wearing graduated compression stockings is that it makes the process better. It decreases the inflammation that occurs and makes your legs just feel a lot better. And these are the kinds of stockings we use. I tend not to use these uh, stockings, the pantyhose, because they tend to be uncomfortable. But if you just have veins on your calves, we can use these calf high. If you have veins that are up on your thigh, we use the thigh high. And they're really not uncomfortable. Um, the reason I like compression is I want your veins to heal like this, because if you have too much of a thrombus in the vessels, those little blood vessels will reform and cause the doctor to have to treat you multiple, multiple times. Wait, before you go on, we have the little poll about stockings. Oh, okay. So let me put a little poll up here. We're just curious how many of you have ever worn stockings to make your legs either look or feel better. Um, for some of us, they just cover up unsightly veins. For others of us, if our veins have pain, they might feel better. So we're just trying to get a gauge of where we're at here. So let me just give you guys a couple more seconds submit your answers. And, and while you're doing that, I just want to let you know, I wear graduated compression stockings, uh, not these kinds, more like these kinds, every day when I'm in the office because I don't ever want to get leg veins. And most of my nurses also wear graduated compression stockings every day. Okay, well, here are the results. It seems 64% of you are also doing the same thing and you are wearing stockings, so. Well, great. So I want to show you now, um, this, is, this is about walking. And so walking is very important. Um, the diagram may be a little bit um, difficult to read, but 
This, this vein here is called the great saphenous vein. It's a deep vein. And the veins on the outside are the superficial veins. And what I'm trying to show is that when you're walking, you're actually pushing blood out of your leg because that's how blood gets back to our heart by the compression of the veins from walking. Um, we actually did a real clinical study uh, showing, and this study was done many years ago, that if you wear the compression stockings, you have less bruising, less swelling, and less pigmentation. And this is one of my wife's best friends. Um, and she, I treated her, and she actually wore her compression stocking uh, when she was cycling. And so there really isn't an excuse. I have patients where their compression stockings, one patient actually almost, I think she won in her age group, the San Diego Marathon wearing a compression stocking. I had another patient who was uh, interviewed on 2020 um, that uh, is a professional tennis player. And we did the procedure to her and she wore her stockings the next day um, playing tennis. I have patients uh, even swimming in their stockings. And so the, the question I always get is, well, should I take my stockings off to, to take a shower? And the answer is no. The stockings will dry very easily within 10 to 20 minutes. If you're in a rush, you can take a hair dryer to it, but you never take the stockings off your leg for one week after the procedure. So this is really what you wanna see. And uh, again, I've been doing this a long time so I have patients that have long-term follow-up and you can see that once you treat the veins, and again, these are usually one treatment, um, you really never get the veins back again. Um, this is on the front part of the thigh. And this is an elderly lady in her 80s who required two different treatments. Um, and you could see that initially these were her veins and she just did not like the appearance of her legs. This is what it looked like. It's a condition called, excuse me, matting. And then just over time, it went away. So a year later, she had very nice looking legs. Uh, again, 15 year follow-up on patients uh, showing how uh, once you get the leg veins to go away, they really stay, stay away. Another patient showing how quickly uh, your veins do get, be get better. And so usually if you have an, uh, a holiday that hopefully we're going to be able to take pretty soon and you want your legs to look really good, it does take a few months for your legs to look really good after the procedure. Now, this is where I use a laser. There are some people that have this type of uh, blood vessel called essential telangiectasia. And you could see here, this is the imprint of the laser that I used on her vein. So there are some times I actually do use lasers. So just to conclude, there are many different ways that we can treat veins. It all depends on the type of veins you have and the size. And that here at Cosmetic Laser Dermatology, we literally develop the procedures and we literally do all of the procedures for you. Um, and with that, thank you very, very much. Um, this is just part of my family. My wife always yells that I never have pictures of her in here. Um, and so this is, these are my two little grandkids and my son-in-law and my daughter. And of course, nothing would be complete without my dog, Otis. So if you want to schedule an appointment, we are taking appointments starting in May. Um, and this is our office number. This is our website if you want to see more pictures. Um, and then of course, you can go on Instagram or Facebook as well. So thank you guys very much for listening. And now we'll open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Goldman. That was amazing. I love it. So a lot of questions have been coming in. Let's try and get to these. And anyone else, if you came, if you came in after I started, at the bottom of your screen is the one that says Q&A. Any questions you would like Dr. Goldman to answer, please put in there. And if it's something about you, as much information as you can provide will help him, because of course he cannot see you. <laughs> so. Yeah, just for people, so this is my wife and my granddaughter. So she says, I never show pictures of her. So that's what she looks like. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So let's see. Um, here's an easy one to start off with. How many veins will you treat in one session? Well, in the olden days, nobody knew the right answer. And some doctors would charge you by the number of veins. What I do is I basically treat 
everything. Because as we saw in those pictures, all of the veins are interconnected. And so when you come in, I will treat all the veins on your leg in one session. Now, if you don't have that many veins, we'll treat both legs at the same time, but there is a, a maximal amount of medicine that I can use. So usually what we'll do is we'll have two treatments, one one day, one the next day. And then I usually see all my patients back in about two weeks, just to make sure everything's going perfectly. And then if you need a second treatment, we wait two to three months before we need to do the second treatment. Beautiful. Okay, so here's another one. Um, for the girl that has high or unrealistic expectations, might be me, and you have to treat her three to four times with a laser versus one to two times for many more veins with sclerotherapy, is there a big difference in price? Well, again, it all depends. Um, it's interesting, even though the sclerotherapy medicine that I use may cost $50 and a laser may cost $200,000, it, it's not about paying for the laser and everything else. It, 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 the prices are fairly similar. Usually we end up uh, charging about $750 uh, for the leg, uh, treat all the veins on your leg. Um, and so, but it's, it's very variable. I have to really see you and see what types of veins you have before I can honestly give you an accurate estimate on what the cost will be. The one thing I can promise you is that we treat you in the least number of treatments. So one of the things that really irks me is when you go to one of these vein clinic doctors and who knows what they are, retired proctologists or a GP or something that got bored and wants to become a, what they call a vein doctor, um, they end up stringing you along for like 10 to 20 treatments. And so they may charge you only $200 a treatment, but you're gonna have 10 treatments versus, you know, I'm gonna charge you maybe $750, but it's only gonna be one or two treatments. So you gotta be really careful on who you see. Okay, great. So that, um, that is very similar to another question that we got. So what is the difference in going to a vein center or a dermatologist like you to treat leg veins? Is there really a difference? You know, it's hard to say. 37 years ago, I actually founded the National Society of Doctors, which is called the American College of Phlebology, um, which now has about 3,000 members in the United States. And when we founded the society, it was one third vascular surgeons, one third dermatologists, and one third others. Uh, there is a, uh, a specialty called angiology, which are doctors that just lead, deal with blood vessels. But since I published all these textbooks, we basically made it very easy for people to, to learn how to do. So I'm not saying you have to go to like the best doctor in the world because you know, you just have to go to a good doctor that's read my textbook and has taken courses and has been doing this for, for a while. But there is no specialty of vein doctors. Anyone can hold, can put up a shingle in their office and call themselves a vein specialist. Um, but there isn't any specialty. So it's really important to see the before and after pictures, ask what the qualifications of the doctor are, you know, were they a retired proctologist that's now doing veins? Were they an ER doctor that's now doing veins? Um, is it a nurse that's gonna be doing it? Not that there's anything wrong with nurses, but you gotta feel it out for yourself. And the most important thing is, again, realistic expectations. Um, you have to question the doctor, uh, make sure that he or she is, is qualified, and then really go with your gut. Great, okay, thank you. All right, here's another good question. So many of you are submitting these anonymously, but I don't know your name, so thank you for sending them. So does sclerotherapy have any side effects? I had sclerotherapy yeah. about 20 years ago and I feel it may have caused other spider or varicose veins to occur because the blood flow must now use other veins. Well, hopefully it wasn't me because I've never seen that, but of course sclerotherapy has complications as is driving your car has potential adverse effects that can happen. I, ca I can honestly tell you that in the 35 years I've been doing sclerotherapy on upwards of 40,000 patients, I have never had a major complication. 
I have never had a patient get an allergic reaction. I have never had patients get blood clots. It just doesn't happen. You gotta do something really weird for that to happen. About the only real adverse effects that happens is maybe one in a thousand patients will have a little teeny ulcer on their skin about the size of a pencil eraser, uh, which takes a few weeks to go, go better, uh, get better. Um, about 10 to 15% of patients will get a little bit of what I call ghosting of the vein. So you have like a, a little pigmentation along the course of the vein. And then that 99% oh, of that gets better within a year. If it doesn't, we take a little, what's called a tattoo removal laser and get rid of it. And about 10% of patients will have that new onset of blood vessels called telangiectatic matting, but that almost always goes away on its own. Um, yes, there are some patients that may get more of blood vessels over time, just like that very first patient. Let me just go back and see if I can show it to you. Um, this patient, so who I saw in 1988, and she just came in with these, and she did really, really well, and then she found me again like 22 years later, and this vein is, is still gone, but she's now developed this vein here, which is actually has a name, it's called the vein of Giacomini. Um, that I was then able to treat. And then, of course, the vein went away for five years. I haven't seen her since. So you can develop new veins, um, and no one can prevent new veins, but the veins that are treated should never, ever come back. Very helpful. Okay, here's a good one. I'm sure a lot of people ask um, or are thinking, so how will the blood flow in my legs if you close the veins? Is there a limit to how many veins you can sclerose? And props for using that word to whoever sent this in. Yeah, and that's a great, great question. I get asked this question all the time. The first thing is when you can see veins on the surface of your skin, they're no longer functioning properly. They're no longer bringing blood back to the heart. They're bringing blood away from the heart. And so they're causing new veins to occur. So when you treat those veins, it improves the circulation. And again, in studies that we've done, about half of the patients that come to see me, even if it's just the cosmetic veins, do have some tenderness or heaviness in their legs. And invariably, after I treat them, they will say, wow, the pain has gone away or patients that never knew about the pain say, you know, it's really weird. My legs feel lighter and they feel better than they ever have before because they've been living with this heaviness and pain for so long. So the answer to your question is, if you're treating the abnormal broken veins, it improves the circulation. Beautiful, okay. Um, here's another one. When you say that the blood isn't flowing properly, does it mean you're at an increased risk for blood clots? Yes and no. If you have those really big veins, and again, let me go back and show you what I mean by the really big veins, um, like these guys. If you have big veins like this or veins like this, What's happening in, the, in here is the vein, the blood is not flowing back to your heart upwards. It's flowing back down. And you can even see here that this gentleman now has all of these little blood vessels around the ankle. What ends up happening is if he got an injury here, like a, a block fell on him or something, it would cause an ulcer that wouldn't heal. And so by getting rid of these veins, which we did here, you could see all of his hair starts growing back and his skin becomes better. And also it, it becomes stronger. So it prevents things, bad things from happening. Um, if this vein was not treated, this guy has at least a 50% chance that he will develop blood clots. And blood clots are not the best things to develop because they can break off and go into your uh, heart and lungs. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but you know, a flip of the coin is not good enough for me. And that's why when you have veins that are this big, it really is important um, to get them treated. Great. Okay. So another person says, what is the stuff that you inject and why does it make the vein go away? Is it bad for your body elsewhere? And are there any side effects? Um, you know, 
you could probably get, say that yes, one in a million injections has a side effect, but the two medicines that we use, one is a detergent solution. And it's actually a detergent that is an emulsifying agent that is used in pastries, so like tasty cakes. And this, these detergents have been around since 1946, and no one has died from, in, from having these detergents injected into them. But the other solution we use is glycerin, and glycerin is just like sugar. And so no one dies from having a little bit of sugar. In fact, we did a study where we had patients who had very labile diabetes, they were on insulin, and I had them take their blood sugar before treatment, and then after we injected them with, it was a, almost around 10 cc's of the glycerin, and there wasn't any spike whatsoever in your blood sugar. So I have yet in 35 years and 40,000 patients to see any adverse effects from using any of the solutions that are all FDA approved that we use. Okay. Um, someone else says, is it safe to treat long bulging veins that run down my forearm and bulging veins in the hand? Is there any concern when yeah. closing up these big veins? You know, I, I didn't put that in here because it was about legs, but yes, that's another treatment that we do. Um, we treat leg, uh, arm veins, we treat veins on your chest. You know, many times, especially when uh, women get breast augmentation, uh, it accentuates or dilates the veins on your chest and we can treat them just as easily, maybe even easier um, because they don't have that, they don't require compression stockings. So we can treat veins on the arms, on the abdomen, on the chest, uh, and then when we get to the face, the only veins we can treat on the face, that's where we use a laser because you don't want to do injections on the face because the face is, has different types of arterial and vein connections and you can actually interfere with blood flow. But anywhere other than the face, we can do injections. Great. Okay, so someone says, what do you think about radiofrequency ablation? Well, radiofrequency ablation was that first, um, uh, let me go back here. It was actually the procedure that I helped invent with uh, Bob Weiss. And we first invented the radio frequency that went into this great saphenous vein. And that's a really good procedure. Uh, the company was called Venus Closure and that was actually my patents and invention. And then what we did is we said, you know, you don't need radio frequency, laser is better. And so that's when Dr. Weiss and I came up with the laser procedure. But both of those procedures are very, very good. And they're way better than the surgical option. Okay, great. So um, a quick question from two different people. They're asking, is it ever covered by insurance? You know, I just don't play the insurance game. There are a number of doctors that do play with insurance companies, and I don't. Um, and if you were to go to doctors that play with insurance companies, um, you'll see that the bills will probably be in the order of like $20,000 to have your great saphenous vein removed because it's amazing what kind of charges they'll put in. Um, for instance, I do the entire procedure for $3,500, um, and I don't deal with any insurance companies. And I find that the $3,500 I charge you is probably less than the copay uh, and the deductible that you're gonna pay from going through insurance companies. So, you know, insurance should be used for things that are serious. Um, at this point, since almost 80% of everyone in the United States has veins, it would totally bankrupt the insurance companies. So I try to keep things really ethical and I don't deal with the insurance company on veins. Okay, great. All right, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. How soon will you be accepting new patients to treat leg veins? I had them treated once before and had a reaction to the saline solution, so I know that I need further treatment. Well, saline solution is something I never use. I think it's barbaric because it really, really hurts. So we don't use saline. Um, I don't know what the reaction would have been. It could have been many different things. Saline causes a lot of pigmentation and a lot of ulceration or sores on your skin. That's one of the reasons we don't use it. The reason some doctors use it is it's really, really cheap. So the medicine I use costs like 50 bucks and the saline costs like 50 cents. But 
you know, I'd rather use the expensive stuff because it works a lot better. Um, we're going to reopen as soon as Governor Newsom says we can reopen. Um, what's happening here in San Diego, for all you guys that keep up, is, you know, we, we're doing better than almost everywhere in the country. We're, we're on that flat curve. We've had the fewest number of ICU beds um, because I am on call as a volunteer physician uh, for Scripps Hospital uh, to triage, and they're not going to call me. Uh, because only one third of our ICU beds are being utilized. And so I think San Diego is probably going to open up uh, within the next few weeks. And right now what we're doing in our clinic is we're scheduling appointments starting May 1st. Of course, we're only going to open up when Governor Newsom says we can open up. Okay, great. And then also for any of you that are interested, of course, we have to wait till you can come in to get treated, but Dr. Goldman is available for one-on-one -on -one video or virtual consultations if you would like to send him pictures and let him examine you. And any um, money towards a virtual consultation will go towards the treatment when we open up again. So, um, okay. So what, someone had wanted to clarify when you mentioned the 3,500. They said 3,500. I thought it was 750 per leg. Can yeah, you it's, the, the most I would ever charge for treating the great saphenous vein, that's a big vein that used to be stripped, and now what we do is we put a laser inside it in the operating room, that's a 3,500. Um, to treat your little spider veins, it's anywhere from 500 to $750. Great. Okay, well, that answered a few questions about pricing. So someone has a question about stocking so are there stockings you can recommend that we can buy off amazon or what are the specs we should look for when trying yeah. to find our own you know the biggest problem with stockings is you have to be measured and so if you have a tape measure at home um there are measuring guides where you take the diameter of your ankle your mid calf and your thigh and you can figure out which stocking is best for you uh, you know, I just don't trust anyone. And so um, we have all the stockings in our clinic and my staff will, my nurses measure you and give you the proper stockings. But you can do this at home as well as all you need is a tape measure and you go on the websites of the various companies. You know, the key companies out there that I really like, I really like a company called Jobst. I like a company called Medi. I like a company called Sigvaris. There's one called Juzo. So there's many different kinds of companies that make leg vein stockings. Um, what I would prefer is if you are going to buy them online, make sure you measure your legs, make sure you do what's, uh, what the companies are telling you to do. And I would get the class one stockings. Those are the stockings that I wear every day. Um, the, the stronger stockings that we're going to use after your treatment I would really prefer if you allow us to measure you and make sure you're fitted properly. Perfect. Okay, all right guys, we have a few more minutes for some questions. Um, so let's see, here's the next one from Stephanie, someone that used their name. <laughs> Stephanie says, for someone that has minimal spider veins in several areas spread out between both legs, would sclerotherapy or laser be the preferred choice? You know, Stephanie, I would have to look. Um, the reason I prefer sclerotherapy initially is because it's the least expensive and the least painful. Uh, even though I've developed many different lasers for leg veins, the laser hurts the most. So if you want, we could do an experiment. I'll do laser on one leg and sclerotherapy on the other, and then you tell me. But every time I've done that experiment, every single patient prefers the injections. You know, some patients just think, oh my gosh, it's a needle, it's gonna really, really hurt. It really, really doesn't. It's just like an acupuncture needle. And again, in the worst scenario, if you're really, really, really nervous, we can always give you a little bit of laughing gas and then you could care less what we're doing. <laughs> okay, great. And I can actually vouch for that. I had, um, I tore my ACL about 10 years ago. And from that injury, I actually got a small vein kind of on my calf um, and Dr. Goldman treated it. And it literally the tiniest vein it took all of two minutes and went away, so it did not hurt. Okay, let's see, just a few more questions. So if, um, let's see, I have read that apple cider vinegar can reduce the formation of spider wings. Is this true and safe to do at home? 
No, I don't think so. There's never been a study that says that. It's funny, some companies, uh, since I write all these textbooks, wanted me to endorse things like that or pills, and there is no pill or supplement or vinegar uh, that you can use to treat your leg veins. Um, if it works for you, let me know and we'll publish it and we'll do a real study. But in the 35 years I've been doing this, we've never seen anything like that in the real world. Okay, all right. So Kimberly is what, was hoping this presentation would cover facial veins a little bit. So maybe let's talk about facial veins. What are some of the best treatment options for the veins around the eyes, the nose, the ones that yeah, are- Yeah, well, one of the reasons we have 50 different lasers in our office is every laser and every kind of vein requires a different kind of laser. Uh, Dr. Wu did an incredible lecture that you can actually access. Uh, Risa, you could tell us how to access that online, which discussed uh, facial veins. Um, I, I love something called intense pulse light. We have, when you, if you have veins, big veins around your eyes, we use something called the Cool Touch Varia. Um, we also use either the Candela or the Sinusure Pulse Dye Laser. So there's many different lasers that we use depending on the size and the color and the type of the vein that you have on the face. But I would not recommend at all for any reason having injections in the face because you can get bad things happening. Okay, great. And anything else about facial veins that people should know or? No, just that it, it, it's really, really easy to do. You know, when the pulse dye laser was developed in 1986, uh, my former partner, who's unfortunately passed away, Dr. Richard Fitzpatrick and I, bought the very first pulse dye laser uh, for commercial use. And one of the very first papers that we wrote was treating facial veins. Now that laser, although it was really good, caused a lot of bruising. And so then uh, we went on to develop and invent the intense pulse light in, in order to treat those facial veins without causing bruising. And so that's what I use a lot. Uh, but now the newer pulse dye lasers from the Candela and the Sinusure companies uh, can also uh, work really well. So the question is, which laser do I choose? And the answer is that it's based on the type of vessels that you have. But literally you can walk in with face veins and walk out without face veins. It's that easy of a procedure. Okay, and what are the side effects and the downtime for treating facial veins? Again, if, if you do it properly, I've never seen a real side effect or downtime. The worst thing is if you have veins right around your nose in this area, they're actually being fed by something called the nasal labial artery. And so those veins tend to come back um, about after every six months or so because you can't stop the artery or else your face falls off. And so, you know, sometimes it's good to have it treated twice a year. Um, but when we treat the veins around your eyes, again, that's one and done. Uh, you treat the, the patient one time. I've been doing that for over 20 years since we developed a laser called the Cool Touch Varia, and I've never seen them ever come back. So it can, that's when you should come in for a consultation. And the reason all of my doctors here are, I think they're the best, and they actually treat me as well, is because we have every possible laser uh, you could use. And so all of my doctors are really well trained on treating your facial veins. Okay. Um, and can you share a cost range for the procedure of treating the facial veins that you just spoke about? You know, again, if, if it's just a few, it could be 250 bucks. If it's like really extensive, it could be 750. So it, it's not thousands of dollars, but it really all depends on, on how many and what size veins you have. Okay, all right, two more questions. What about the tiny purple veins on the eyelids? Oh, they're really, really hard. And the reason they're hard is because you obviously wanna be able to see how beautiful you look after treatment. And so that means you don't wanna go blind. And so there are some lasers that we can use to treat those, but those require putting in what's called an eye shield, which is like a contact lens. And so those are a little bit more difficult to treat but we can treat those as well. But again, it's important to come in for a consultation. 
Okay, and our last question of the day from Virginia. Can you get rid of veins around the ankles and on the top of the feet, the foot? Uh, yes, we can. I'll show you the ankle picture. Ooh, maybe I, I already went through it. I don't know where it is, but, but uh, the answer is yes. You can treat your ankle uh, veins really easily. I don't know where, oh, here it is. Um, and obviously these are really a lot of veins. Um, on the top of the feet, that could be more difficult because those veins actually function to take blood out of the foot uh, back to your heart. And so although I can treat those veins, sometimes your foot will be swollen like a size or two larger for one to two months. So that's why it's important to have a consultation because we really have to examine you um, to see if it's a treatable vein. And then more importantly, if you're okay with having a swollen foot for a month or two. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goldman. Just as a reminder, Dr. Goldman is available for virtual consultations. You can schedule on our website, which is right here on the slide, cldurham.com, and have access to his schedule. Um, we also hope to be open for in-person visits. I hope he, Dr. Goldman is right, and then it's just a few weeks away, but it definitely will be soon, and uh, we would love to see you. And otherwise, please follow us on social media. Um, you will be getting a survey when this webinar closes, and we would really appreciate any feedback or thoughts that you have, um, so we can really just help continue to provide um, and, you know, the best education that we can for you all while we're at the stay home mandate. So thank you so much, Dr. Goldman. And thank you very much. And remember, if, if there's difficulty getting in to see me, my other associates are really, really good as well in treating veins, especially veins uh, off the leg and on the face. So I hope to see you in our clinic and I hope you stay safe and everyone make sure we keep washing our hands. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye.